Hello you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So we have two plugins for Burp that I want to review for you guys, namely Authorize and SQLI Pi. So if you guys have any opinions on this well, uh, please leave them down in the comments below because I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. So for reviewing something I've come up with four categories that I want to go through with you guys. Uh, the first one is requirements. We're going to start with authorized. So for authorized, there aren't a whole lot of requirements. You just have to make sure that your session is being handled in the headers. So as you can see here, you have to write your headers in here. And these are the headers of your victim that you want to put in here. I have a video about this. Uh, so I'm going to link that one in the description as well. But what you have to know for now is that you can put your headers in here. So that's the requirement is that your sessions are handled in your headers. The functionality is that it's going to repeat your requests that you make with both the header that you put in here and an authenticated header if you have an authenticated header that is if you have this checkbox checked um, and it's if you have it unchecked it's only going to do it with the headers that you provided. Now um, you can also save your headers as you can see in here. So that's some functionality that we're moving to now. Um, we are also able to have a request response viewer. This is really cool. Um, check out my authorized video if you guys want to know how to use this specifically. Now we also have, uh, when we go back, we can filter out specific results. So we'll go back to the configuration tab and here we can see, <coughs> excuse me guys, here we can see that the type that we can filter on is, so what we want to do here is, for example, we can say that the body has to contain a certain content, a certain text, your headers have to contain some certain texts. Um, this is for your enforcement detector, so this is for the specific person that you fill your cookies in here. And you can also do the same for unauthenticated requests, of course. You have some interception filters, which I use a lot. For example, I only want items that are in scope, so I always add this specific one. Then you also have your match and replace, of course, which, which you can do a lot with. You can do uh, match and replace in the headers with a simple string, with a regular expression. You can also do it in the body and also again with simple string and regular expressions. Now you can also adjust the output filter, which is this tab, table filter. And here you can just, for example, I don't want to see the modified bypass is enforced and enforced. I can just uncheck these and I'm not going to see them anymore. And then again, I can save, that's the last functionality, save my session where I was. For example, if I'm here, I can save the state and it's going to, I can restore the state when I want to pick it up later and I will be just where I left off with authorize. So that's it for functionalities. Pretty cool, a lot of functionalities in here. When we have everything set up, we can uh, start authorize. Now, how good is it? For me, it's really good. You'll need to set up some filters because you're going to find some things in here. For example, what I usually do is I filter out anything that's uh, a heartbeat, for example, or a dashboard, or any functionality that can be uh, executed unauthorized, I don't want in here because I'm testing for unauthorized functionality. And if I'm supposed to be able to do that, I don't want authorized to start detecting false positives. So that's why I always exclude those. Now, um, for me, it's also really good because you uh, really speed up your eyes are looking massively, your broken access controls, that kind of stuff. You can really speed it up massively with authorize. So for me, it's really interesting and it's very user friendly. Not a lot of configuration is required and you can start using it out of the box. That's really for me a big plus because as you'll see, the next one requires some extras. So we'll now move on to SQL Pi. For SQL Pi, we have some requirements. For example, Jiten 2.7.0 uh, or newer Java 1.7 or 1.8. Most people have that installed. Jiten, not probably, but when you go to your extender tab and you go to your BAP store, 
you can see here is going to be a link to installing Jiten if you don't have it installed already. So for that requirement, that's usually covered. And then you get Python 2. That's also a requirement, of course. And the SQL map API needs to be configured properly. And that's the tab that you're seeing here, SQL map API. As you can see, you need to tell it where Python is and you need to tell it where your SQL map API is. So that's really important. As for functionality, you'll need to start your API. That's really easy. Just click a button, start API, wait a few seconds. And as you can see, the API is currently running. Now you can look for a SQL injection vulnerability in one single URL at a time. So you cannot feed it a list of URLs which is for me a little bit of a shame uh, and it can be started m multiple times manually so it's not that big of a deal but you have to select your urls carefully um, it can be started multiple times manually so when you want to do that you just go to your target to your proxy to your history you select the specific url that you need right click it send to sql pi and it's going to do your scanning for you so um, one other functionality that it has is another tab in here, as you can see, after starting your tab. So you'll fill in the details in here. So as you can see as well, there's a lot of different parameters that you can set. You can set some custom headers. You can set a user agent, some test parameters. And here you can pick how deep it you want to test and what risk level you want to test at. Um, so when you've set these parameters, when you've started your scan, you're going to go to the SQL map logs page and you're going to look for your specific scan ID. So a new scan ID is going to get started and you're going to select it and you're going to click get to get your scan ID. Now, if you want SQL map to stop, of course, you can just go to the SQL map scan stop tab and here you can select your ID and you can click stop. And that's pretty much it for SQL map. So how good is it? Pretty user friendly. You'll have to set some options like the Jiten has to be installed. You'll have to tell it where to look for Jiten. So it can be a little bit more daunting, but that's not a huge task. I mean, you guys are all amazing hackers, so it shouldn't be that hard. Um, all of the options of SQL map can be configured. So that's really a big plus. You can, you don't have to rely on your UI. There's also a free entry for options that you want to fill in. So really interesting. Uh, and the default settings will usually work fine. So it's pretty beginner friendly. Again, you'll have to set up some options, but it's not that hard. Uh, what would I different? What would I do different for this specific tool? Well, there's only one thing that I would really like to see different. And that's that you can scan a whole lot of uh, URLs at once. But again, I would have to write it myself and I'm no genius in this kind of stuff either. So I'm not going to complain and ask for anything. I'm just happy that this exists. Uh, both of these extensions are highly recommended for me and I would give them five stars if I could. Thank you guys for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.